Hey guys, I just wanted to go over a quick case that's currently in progress right now. <clears throat> this is the starting uh, uh, iTero scan that we had for the patient. As we can see, a very narrow arch, <clears throat> a V-shaped arch, uh, definitely an airway patient. <clears throat> uh, what we wanted to do was start by uh, expanding her, her upper, upper arch before we started straightening the teeth. <clears throat> if we decided to just use Invisalign, she does have quite a bit of uh, buccal bone to, to move these teeth, uh, but we felt like uh, expansion of the arch was the right play, uh, considering how much uh, of a V-shaped arch there was. Again, going back to that. So what we had done, we had used this appliance right here from Ohlendorf. This is another picture of it here. Essentially, it is a removable palate expander for adults. With kids, you can attach things like this, quad helices, um, all these different appliances that are fixed to the teeth because the palatal suture and the alveolar bone is so likely to stretch, there, thereby you don't need to let it relax. Whereas adults, <clears throat> things are, are more set up. You really need to have some rest time, which is why we actually have it be removable. Um, <clears throat> yes, there are surgical options that have anchored, uh, anchored appliances to the palate, uh, but that's a topic for, for a different discussion. Uh, but just to show you the, the power of what we have here, there's two screws. And when you turn these, you expand the palate uh, about a quarter millimeter per turn. So again, this is where we started. And then this is where we are right now. Let's go to the upper arch. So you can see how much wider things are already. Uh, and we're already starting to create space between the anterior teeth. If we go back here, you can see there was no space. Uh, unfortunately, the Itero scan doesn't, uh, or the Itero, my Itero software doesn't allow us to measure the intermolar distance. Uh, that's only uh, a function that we can find in uh, the Invisalign ClinCheck software. But just so you know, <clears throat> we talk about the intermolar width or the palatal width. It's measured by the most palate or palatal or lingual position of the upper first molar from one side to the other. The ideal, 38 to 40 millimeters. If I had to guess, this patient is probably below 30. Uh, but you can see here, she's definitely got some expansion. It's important to note that expansion is not opening of the suture. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the, pe the proponents of this technology don't spend a good amount of time talking about what it is. They, they talk about the fact that the suture never really closes, therefore you can do these kinds of procedures in adults. In reality, it's not really the suture that we're opening. It's stretching and expansion of the entire alveolus and the palate, or more specifically the alveolus. I don't think the palate necessarily opens as much. But it's important to know that when you apply force to an entire segment of teeth, you're going to move the alveolus and not necessarily the teeth. You might get a little bit of tipping, but most of the tipping that we see is actually good tipping. We're not going to see profound uh, proclination <clears throat> of those posterior teeth. At least I haven't seen that in the several cases that we've done so far. But <clears throat> you can see how much we've opened here. This has been about six months of expansion. Uh, she's been, this patient's been very diligent with her, her expander. Uh, I definitely look forward to uh, probably three more months of expansion. And then we're going to switch her over to Invisalign trays. Now this entire time she's been in Invisalign on the lower. If we take a look at the progress that we've had so far, our goal was to intrude her lower teeth and extrude the posterior teeth, thereby leveling her occlusal plane. As you can see, we've done quite a bit of that. How do we do that? <clears throat> well, we typically will place buttons on some of the posterior teeth to counteract the intrusive forces of the anterior teeth. As we recall from Newton's third law of motion, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. When we push down here, the tray wants to pop up. So we have to place at least one button somewhere posteriorly. Uh, here we placed them on the canine and the second molar. 
uh, to help counteract that extrusive force of the, um, the Invisalign tray as we intruded the lower anterior teeth. We normally use the, uh, the premolars and or the first molar. Uh, it's harder to bond the porcelain. We just decided to, to skip it. Obviously, we've got a great result here, so I'm not really worried. Uh, but as you can see, we've got great intrusion of that lower, uh, lower interior segment. Meanwhile, we've been widening the palate. So, in case I wanted to show great progress, we're going to switch her over to upper and lower Invisalign trays. We'll get everything uh, dialed in. And then after that, we're going to get started with uh, some bone grafting and an implant on the lower. And she might want us to replace these crowns based on aesthetic concerns. With that said, she's already very happy where things are going. All right. Hope all is well. And always remember, thinking outside the box uh, gives us these kinds of solutions that would normally be outside the reach of most patients. Have a good night.